the amount of defence expenditure uh, as compared to the GDP of a country may not be a key indicator. Therefore, it is essential to be able to define the, the goals for which money is allocated. That is also a way of convincing finance ministers, political leaders and perhaps also the citizens themselves to, if not spend more, certainly continue spending what is necessary in order to achieve those goals. Well, it is to a certain extent understandable that countries that are completely encircled by partners and allies do not see defence spending as a top priority, whereas other countries that perhaps border with non-EU countries and maybe feel that those countries are a threat to their territorial um, integrity uh, may be more inclined to defence spending. What is important, however, is that if defence spending is also geared towards defen defending common strategic interests, that is something that should pertain also to those countries that otherwise would not spend. Defining what are our common interests and how we want to contribute to defending them collectively could be a better key in order to convince also those countries to contribute in terms of solidarity to the common effort. Could also facilitate what people like to call today the pooling and sharing of capabilities and also perhaps facilitate uh, um, mobilizing the resources, including the financial resources that are necessary to achieve those common goals. These things very often are triggered by events, so it very much depends on what happens outside and what level of awareness uh, citizens might have for the need of acting together also in that domain. So that is why it is a sort of uh, uh, unpredictable state of affairs. All the trends are negative in this particular level, but something might happen at some point in time, be it in Mali or nearby, that would convince political leaders and citizens alike to return to a more, uh, a wiser way of spending money on defence that could lead us forward.